Creative Hype Beta says Frank Ocean's Homer announces new collection and launches a global e commerce shop. So, if you're wondering why Frank Ocean keeps postponing, you know, festival appearances, mostly, you know, he's using the excuse of COVID and whatnot and hiding behind that. But for the most part, he pops out to the other award ceremony, mostly the Met Gala and nothing more of that ilk, maybe. Grammys has he been there I'm not too sure I don't think he has but you don't really see much of Frank Ocean's a part of Frank Ocean's a Frank Ocean apart from you know weird um zoomed out the pictures of him cycling somewhere in New York which is a bit strange too because I think everyone's known for ages that he lives in New York right um it's not really a big deal I think his store if I'm not mistaken was going to open up in New York the kind of jewelry store that he's got going on there for his brand Homer so it doesn't really make sense why people get so excited to see him in New York right cycling around like what else is he meant to do but he obviously lives a pretty nomadic life in that respect. He doesn't really go out that much. It feels like, um, or he doesn't really, he's not really mingling in the industry circles that you'd think he would be. Obviously, I don't think he would be that. Hmm, not think he would be, but you know what I mean. And the music obviously is pretty much non-existent in terms of new new singles and new bodies of work. And I was wondering this off the back of a clip that I saw of Ari Lennox talking about how she basically is considering maybe hanging it up when it comes to being a musical, a professional musical artist. She might put out one last album and decide to pivot into other things because the it, the music business side of it's quite depressing, right? How kind of hard it is to navigate and how much it sucks out of you as a person and whatnot. And I completely understand that. But it also made me think about this idea. It also made me think about something that I thought about a lot when it comes to really highly creative people who maybe just have a lot of ideas who maybe get typecasted or maybe get put into one box when they're coming up because they just happen to be really good at this one thing earlier on, but they want to do these other things. But then what ends up happening is that I feel like music and a lot of things, maybe like even like sport, maybe even just being an influencer, I think they're great occupations because what they allow you to do is they allow you to get your foot in the door, they allow you to showcase your talent in one side of things and then if you're smart and you're diligent and you've got the right people around you, you can leverage that one bit of fame for other bits of fame, right? Or you can, well, so you can leverage that one bit of fame to open different doors that you probably wouldn't be able to open on your own. So I'll think of it from Frank Ocean's side of things. Maybe he's just one of those guys who it's not his fault. He just happens to be really amazing at singing. It's not his fault. He just happens to be an absolute wizard when it comes to songwriting, when it comes to making up of melodies and whatnot. But what he always wanted to do, maybe, was to be a somewhat, you know, what would you call it? Um, a renaissance man, right? He wanted to own, again, his own jewellery company. He wanted to have a small boutique somewhere in, you know, all the kind of popping cities around the world. Maybe that's what he's always wanted to do. He wanted maybe to get into musical production because you think of some of these stage designs that he's done throughout his time performing or short time performing in live shows. They've always been really interesting. His approach to how he releases music in terms of the magazines he does, the vinyls, the prints, how the vin how the magazines were even sold, right? In terms of these weird pop ups popping up in random places, especially here in London. Um, the way the music comes out on streaming platforms, the finesse he did to his previous label with Blunded. Like there's all these little things that he does that maybe makes you think maybe he never really wanted to be a pop not pop star but like a proper musical artist in that way he just wanted to do what he's doing now where he has the ability to drop an album or drop some music whenever he feels like it he also has the ability to launch a global e-commerce platform and maybe open a store design cool bits of jewelry show off his body and his cool furniture on instagram that's maybe what he's always wanted to do um, and it just happened to be that he's really good at music. Do you know what I mean? It's a complete opposite of what I was talking about on the podcast when it concerns Sweetie. I was like, oh, it must be weird. It must be a hard position to be in when you look like Sweetie and when you're like, you know, you're born incredibly attractive and cute and pretty and whatnot, but you just don't have the chops that it needs you need in order to be a performing artist, to be an artist or a singer or whatnot. She just doesn't have it, right? Doesn't seem like the most coordinated person in the world, can't sing for shit, rapping is non existent. But you're just so gorgeous or so good to look at, people just want to keep looking at you and a good thing to use if people want to keep looking at you is obviously to get on Instagram and become one of those people or to just start doing music because you're gonna be on video, you're gonna be rapping stuff, you're gonna be saying things like you're always gonna be in front of some sort of camera. So that's a good way to kind of expose yourself that way. But if you don't have the talent for it what's the point it's going to be a bit of a fool's errand and i think maybe the the opposite could be i think and the inverse could be said for frank ocean in that regard too just because he's good at music should he just keep doing it to satisfy his fans 
to satisfy himself to satisfy his label or whatever who's kind of whatever is that a thing you should be doing or if you have the option to do other things that actually bring you joy especially in this short time we have on this earth maybe you should go and pursue those things maybe but anyway this is the title um some images obviously showing you the magazine itself obviously like you know when it comes to print and putting these kind of things together frank ocean is always really good in that regard i wonder if he has received any help when it comes to putting these things together with this the stuff that he thinks up in his mind but i love that he's really into magazines i love that he's really into print um the jewelry pieces he designs for homer look really really interesting stuff that you obviously won't find in different in other places in terms of how he designs jewelry and a sort of um things that he uses i love the fact that these little ornaments um i think uh, i don't know what they're ornaments or whatnot but they kind of look like um lsd tabs and whatnot or acid tabs so that's pretty cool to see and just really cleverly done the scarves of course they're included as well how much are the silk scarves the silk scarf it doesn't say right it's a price and request i'm assuming or does it say there but i can't see i don't know but yeah wheezy scarf dolly scarf dolly scarf excel wheezy scarf excel they all look really really cool man everything here looks really well presented really well put together um i, I think did i see somebody on youtube that purchased a homer piece i think it might be one of those um korean or japanese sort of like um fashion vlogger guys that are really cool that go around shopping for really expensive cool things and they kind of show off online that whole subculture is always great i love it because it reminds me of the days when i used to post on this forum called fifth dimension back in the day that was kind of a little bit like that it had a lot of people that kind of lived in southeast asia a lot of people who at the time i didn't know because i was flipping 18 years old by the time these guys were like in their mid-20s early 30s so they were making what i was basically make nowadays right in terms of a salary and they were able to buy all this stuff but at the time i was like how, how are you affording visits him how are you doing this but basically they had just normal jobs um but it was cool to basically see them buying neighborhood double taps this vim goros like it was just a crazy crazy time so those vloggers on youtube are definitely people that kind of remind me or make me reminisce about those old guys but again they're far nicer in it because those older guys on fifth dimension were fucking cunts um but yeah look at these bracelets they all look so so good man designs are amazing i bet they must look so much better in person as well i'm sure he's using you know uh, specific gems that's something i'd actually like to get into actually jewelry just in terms of, of a, even if it's not buying loads of amazing things myself but just as a fan in terms of understanding stones clarity weights cuts and all that stuff that's be a really good thing to dive into because i'm already thinking going forward that i want to start getting serious about relearning how to skate again because i used to skate when i was younger i think i started when i was what 13 12 skating until about 19 consistently and then kind of dropped off and haven't done it since but i would like to relearn to skate again and just kind of use that as an opportunity to kind of get geeky and get kind of really interested in something to a hardcore level so that i'm not fucking spending time you know perusing the news and reading about fucking covid and whatnot and learning about people's divorces who i don't know it just doesn't need that information in my head so i'm thinking of doing that buying a cruiser board and just basically learning how to skate watching loads of videos of guns and whatnot and just kind of getting deep into that world again because that gave me a lot of I won't say purpose, but it gave me a lot of time to basically do stuff, right? To be outdoors, to be busy, meet new people, um, learn, fall over, all that shit. It's really cool. I, I'm, I'm really down for it. And again, maybe joy is another thing as well I can do too off the side of that as well. But this all looks so, so impressive. So, so cool. And again, like he definitely has puts a lot more effort it feels like into this sort of stuff that he's doing with the jewelry than he's ever shown us with his music i feel like especially nowadays maybe frank ocean first coming into the scene different because again he was trying to get off his label clearly but the kind of care attention to detail the consistency in messaging and the consistency of just putting out stuff in general um, definitely leads me to believe that this is something he's always definitely wanting to do um more so than maybe doing stuff like you know making music which he just happens to be really talented at again that must be a weird place to be in you happen to be really good at this one thing but you don't also enjoy doing this one thing on a daily basis but anyway quick little article here from hypebeat said frank Ocean's luxury brand homer has officially launched his e-commerce making its products available worldwide so it's a luxury brand so when you have a jewelry brand you just call it a luxury brand you don't call it a jewelry brand i guess because you want to allow yourself the ability to do other things but 
if you're a jewelry brand, you're a jewelry brand. Why call yourself a luxury brand? Anyway, continue. The playful collection is inspired by a symbol of a dog featured with various pendants, bracelets, and rings assembled in nano ceramic colored sterling silver, 18 karat gold, and diamonds exclusively produced in America. Wow. All made in the US of A. Um, Ocean shares a description of the collection saying, When a dog comes to stay, explores a dog as a symbol of one that walks lighter. A sheepdog, an Akita, and a bull terrier are rendered in pixels as to simplify the qualities that makes them our family. To the dog, it seems low teeth without thinking. Love it. Like all of Homer's products, they're designed in New York City, handmade in Italy, and diamonds are all come from a state of the art lab in the US. Okay, it's great to hear. Um, Homer is officially available to ship globally at homer.com. Those who want to visit the store can check out the store in Brewer Street. Oh, sorry, on Bowery. Okay, wow. So, okay, nice. Take a scroll above to see the catalog and where it's coming from. Of course, that's him sitting on a Dieter Rams chair as well, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, big up Frank, looking ripped as well as ever. Looking cute, sitting down on his thing. But, yeah, it makes me wonder, man. I wonder if this is what he's always wanting to do. This is that's just actually been his passion, not making music. He just happens to be really good at making music, and it comes really easy to him. But this is actually what actually gets him up in the morning, um, gives him a purpose, gives him a direction, um, fills him with inspiration, and basically is a way to him to as well to kind of flex his interests, right? Design um, and all manner of other things that basically inform the stuff that he basically puts on his penders and how they put together. But they just look so cool, don't they? really really cool so big up mr ocean big up mr ocean for sure